want y'all to say, in the days of my flesh. I think I got your attention now. What do you do in the days of your flesh? What do you do? So let's look at Hebrews 5. Get Hebrews 5. We're on the train. Ended early. We're on this train. Hallelujah. Um, uh, you can stand for the reading of the word. Amen. Amen. I promise you today we ain't going to be long. Promise you. Unless y'all start doing all that acting up. <laughs> y'all say I'll start doing all the acting now. I'm here. But I, today I want to encourage some of you. Amen. People that are on the verge of quitting. Wow. Now, how do you quit? People that are on the verge of quitting don't, it's called backsliding yeah. all, because it's not all at once. Yeah. It's not all at once. It's stepping away, acting like I'm too busy to do certain things. My life doesn't permit me the time anymore. It's classic. Do you know how many times I've seen this? In my 14 years, and I'm not even talking about my whole life, I've been in church all my life. I've been playing drums actively, actively when I was four. Actively, like every Sunday, playing an instrument since four years old. I've seen it in my mother's ministry. I've seen it at every church I've been to. That active people quit by sliding. Wow. Reduction. Wow. Reduction. Amen. Classic blame in a lot, and I'm using the ladies for now, but it's everybody. Classic blame. Classic. I'm in school. I got I to do my homework tonight. I won't be there. Wow. Did you tell your boyfriend? You, you can still do dates, but you can't do church. Same homework. Wow. Oh, pastor, I got to work on Sunday. You decided to work on Sunday. You didn't take that day off for God. Oh, I was like, get this Hebrews 5, huh? Get this Hebrews 5, okay? All right, let's start. You can start at 1. We'll read for a second. Hebrews 5, starting in verse 1. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, uh -huh. that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself also is compassed now, let me explain this to you while you're standing. You ain't going to stand long. Hebrews is a book for the people who are going through persecution. But chapter 5 needs to explain to you priesthood. And it needs to explain priesthood for the fact that it needs to now put Jesus Christ as our high priest who not only took the title of high priest but had the compassion and the infirmity. You understand? So that's why we, the scripture says, we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmities. So he's not just sacrificing for you. He felt what you went through. <laughs> Do you understand? He felt. See, most of the time, the devil wants you to think that God has never felt what you felt. So he's, his standard is way too high for how you feel. It's an unreachable standard. I can't do this no more. Oh, I can't do this, Lord. I can't do this. This is too much. This is too much. Well, the scripture tells us he knows how you feel. He knows. I need everybody to hear me and say this. He knows how you feel. My question is, do you know how he feels? Okay. Now, come on. Come on. Sins. 
Mm -hmm. And no man putteth his honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as the error. So also Christ glorified, not himself to be named an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my So Christ didn't make himself. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest. He didn't make himself his high priest. His father deemed it to be. Okay? You did not call yourself to a ministry. God called you to a ministry. You did not call yourself. Your fragmented, broken self did not call yourself to ministry. Well, most of us. These devils out there, they call and they sell. They go from being called to an apostle. It's a three-day journey. <laughs> Pastor Nesby, we've seen it. People get saved two days later. They got a collar on that don't even fit them, so it's borrowed. Borrowed collar. Anyway, uh, so he didn't call himself. He's, he says, thou art my son. Okay, let's get to my main scripture. Go to the next. Keep on going. Uh, verse 6. Um, as he said also in another place, thou art, a thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, mm -hmm. who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications. This is, I need y'all to get this scripture. This is the main scripture. We're talking about Jesus. This is Jesus. This, it said, read this again. Who in the days of his flesh. Who in the days of his own flesh. When he had offered up prayers and, uh -huh. and supplications. Yeah. With strong crying uh -huh. and tears uh -huh. unto him that was able uh -huh. to save him from death. Uh -huh. And was heard in that he feared. Uh -huh. Though he were a son, uh -huh. yet learned he obedience uh -huh. by the things which he suffered. Uh -huh. And being made perfect, uh -huh. he became the author of eternal salvation. Uh -huh. Unto all them uh -huh. that obey him. That's all I need. Okay. All right, you may have your seats. I got some intelligent people in here, so I'm going to be brief with my intelligence. Okay. All right. That scripture is very plain. It's plain. Jesus in the days not of his godness, but in the days of his flesh. So my question is, what do you do in the days of your flesh? In the days that you feel frisky. Choo-choo, choo-choo. In the days, and this frisky don't mean what you think. But those days mean I just want to go out in the sun and have fun. And you choose fun over souls. Um, I am, you know, I'm a story guy. So less like I, when, I'm, when I'm preaching, when I get ready to preach, I don't, I don't leave. Usually I got I to gotta leave the TV on to go to sleep, okay? I have to have noise to calm myself. But it's weird, but I know a lot of you got to have silence. But I'm a musician. And if I don't have something, I will be thinking of tunes, music, all kinds of stuff just takes me to another level. I'd be, be drink, you know, thinking, you know, oh, this, this, and that, and putting stuff together, trying to do orchestration in my head, the whole nine. So I got to have something that takes my... But I, on certain days, I only go to sleep I, I have to have, like, Jimmy Swagger, something that's completely just, it's just got to be that, because it sets a tone and a presence. For, for people who minister, you maybe you understand what I'm saying. I need, I need, I don't need to wake up to witchcraft and, you know, because some days you leave the TV on, you wake up to a horror movie, you know, and you wake up right at the time where they're doing something really demonic, and you wake up like, oh! You know, no. So I don't need that. So I put on, and I was watching Jimmy Swaggart, and I looked, and I said, look at this. I said, this man, back in the 70s and the 80s, had 
14,000 people in an arena and 5,000 coming to the altar for salvation. And we, and, and, and we have got enamored with how much we can make you shout. And half the crowd in there ain't even saved. How many of you have no, and I'm actually put your hand up to lie now, but how many of you know that if you die right now, you're going to heaven? Because you've got to be 100% sure that my faith is in Jesus Christ and that it. I ain't got no idol in the back pocket. I don't believe in no voodoo doll or no statue. My faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Period. And if we don't get back to preaching that, and we don't get back to showing that, there's an inconsistency in our life. And the inconsistency in our life will be when we get to the days of our flesh. When we get to the days of our flesh, we will choose something else. So why is God talking about this now? Well, in, in order to get started in this, you got to believe in the humanity, the humanity of Jesus. Now, in, uh, many years ago, we don't have this controversy today, but uh, there was an argument, okay? There was an argument about Christ, his divine nature, and his human nature, okay? Okay, and so we call this, there's a, a, a term called decetus. Decetus was the art, those decetus were people who argued about his nature. There was a big argument. That, that word comes from, um, in the Greek, dokio, meaning to, to seem or to appear, right? So they were arguing that Christ appeared human, but was God. He only appeared human. That means if you, if you went up to him and cut him, he wouldn't bleed because he was only a, appearing like a spirit appearing to be to be flesh, okay? And so, so that, was, that was the argument then. We don't have that issue now uh, as much. I mean, most people don't, don't think that because we've learned about there, there's a word that, that we, we use in, you learn this in Bible school, about the hypostatic nature, okay? Hypostatic nature. It's the union, the, 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 the deity and, and the humanity. It is the Greek word come from hypostasis, all right? That nature, the union of, 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 the, of Jesus, the God-man, okay? Putting, putting both natures together. When Hebrews comes to, when the writer of Hebrews, because that's a whole nother idea that we don't know, we're not clear on the writer of Hebrews. It's not Paul. People believe that it might be Paul, but through the language, it's really not Paul. Okay? Um, it, it is, we're not sure who wrote Hebrews, but we don't really need, in this, uh, in this book, we don't really need to know who wrote it. We need to know why. And this is the problem. In, in writing Hebrews, we have to understand that these people were, they were Jews who got converted. But now they're being forced with the Mosaic law to go back to repeating the Mosaic rites and to leave the grace and to go back to the works. It was a backsliding nature because they were people that were being marginalized. They were being, they were being taken advantage of. They were being robbed. They were going through financially. They were going through emotionally. They were going through everything that y'all sitting here looking at me that you're going through. They're going through all of that, and now they have to make a decision. 
whether they're going to stick with this salvation that was once delivered unto the saints. Or are they going to go back to just rules? Because you can live under rules and regulations. And for a lot of you, that would be easier to do because it's without your heart. You can follow, and a lot of people try to fool spiritual pastors by leaving their heart out but doing the rules of the church. Making sure you give your 10%. Making sure you show up on a Thursday. Making sure you come on Sunday. Making sure you look like you praising. But if we was to do a heart measurement, your heart is outside, but your body's inside. Doing all the works, but you left your heart out. Why? One little bad uh, moment will make people backslide. People Do you know God has never caused one person to backslide? It's always people. All right, now I ain't going to say amen, but I'm going to get in your business. A lot of us let people leave our heart in the parking lot. And because you can't deal with situations properly, you say, you know what? I'm just going to show up. And what good is a relationship with no heart? Okay, y'all, yeah. Uh, I'm going to get a little deeper. I'm gonna, uh, y'all got to st- stop treating God like a cheap date. I ain't going to know amens now, but I'm going to say it until you say amen. Treating God like a cheap date. You, 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 <laughs> you don't even give God carte blanche. Take him to Friday's. Take them to Outback. Red Lobster, like it's, like it's a place of, of, of class. Might I add to say, since someone might see me on my television broadcast, Red Lobster has the smallest shrimps I've ever seen in my life. I don't know what you call them. Those are shrimp shrimps. They're smaller than shrimp. I don't even know what they are. They made those. Don't eat them, because they made them in the back. Promise you. you can't, they're so small, you can't even put a shell on it. And they curled up. So what is that? Now, that's a roach. I don't care what you say. That's a roach. Don't eat red lobster. That's a roach. Okay, let's go back to the, to the text. So why did, why did I explain? I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm getting through here. Why did I explain that? Because in order for you to understand what Jesus went through, Jesus went through more than just the cross. Hebrews is not, when we're talking about him crying out, this is not him crying out because of the cross. This is him dealing with himself. Because most of you are at a place now where you're at a crossroad, whether to go deeper or to stay shallow. Because, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about you, oh, I just want to backslide. No, that's for the other people. But you in the room, you have a choice to either to go deeper or to, or to be shallow or to go deeper in God. And deeper in God takes you away from a shore. A shore is steady, but the deep is not. Okay, I need you all to understand. Both of them get your feet wet. Both of them get your feet wet, but one will submerge you. If you keep walking in the sea, you'll you'll keep walking until the people on the shore lose sight of you. Oh, y'all missed that one. You got to walk into God where the people that knew you don't see you no more. See, as long the devil wants you so shallow... That when you, oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, and you just kicking up water. So when you kick up water, you can get it on top of your head. Oh, I got the water. Oh, oh, oh. no, 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 no. You need to be submerged where we don't see you. That's why we baptize you. When we baptize you, you go invisible. Man. And most of you, you want the baptism 
that leads to power, but not the baptism of your own tears. Because when God makes, you should not cry more over a relationship than you cried for your ministry. Oh, man. Some of you are guilty of crying over your marriage more than you cried for souls. Cried that God would give me a spouse. Oh, oh, oh. Well, what did he call you to do? Man, I thought I'd have more amens than that. You've cried over a better job. You've cried over everything rather than what he's called you to produce in the earth. So in the days of your flesh, you quit. Ah. Uh, talking today, huh? All right. All right. The, the, the stern warning is for those who shrink back and look elsewhere for their security in life. Hebrews uh, 13 and 13. Hebrews 13 and 13. Just read that. Hebrews 13 and 13. Just grab that real quick. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm real quick. I'm, I'm teacher preaching today. I ain't really preaching. What does that say? Let us go forth. Let us go forth, therefore, therefore, unto him. With go ahead. Let us go. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. Okay, can you get that in the Amplified Classic, please? Let us then go forth from all that would prevent us to him outside the camp at Calvary. Bearing the contempt and abuse and shame with him. Oh, let us go forth bearing contempt, uh-huh. abuse. Uh-huh. Well, wait, 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 wait. It didn't say let us get free from it. There's some things that you can share, but there's other things that you have to bear. There's some things you can, what do I mean? There's some things you can tell your friend and get their advice. There's other things that you need to be quiet and bear it. Most of you are guilty of sharing what you should be bearing. Most of us are guilty of sharing what we should be bearing because we don't think in Christianity there's no word called abuse. Ooh. We don't, we, and every time you see the word abuse or contempt, we start blaming it on a demon. The first thing you want to do when there's something like that is start speaking in tongue, binding and loosing. I loose that. I bind that. I bind that. You know, when people start praying against devils, they start, I don't know why, like a battery appears in their tongue and they just start saying it so fast, like it's like another gear. You know, it's like when you get, like you, you got to bind the devil. I bind, him, I bind him right now. I bind him from the east. I bind him from the west. I bind him from the north and the south. I bind him from the bind, him, I bind him. I bind that devil in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, oh you devil of contempt. Oh, you devil of evil. In the name of Jesus Christ. And then, uh, hush up and bear it. Because God needs to see how resilient you are before he grants you with the Holy Spirit to aid you. And if you, oh, my Telosia. And if you don't have no resilience, he's not going to bless you. There's got to be a point where you enter into the lion's den and don't start crying. Most of you have entered into the lion's den ready to be eaten. But people who love him go into the den praising. Oh, it's quiet, Lord. It's quiet, Lord. Most of you would have never, the fiery furnace would have never happened 
after you would have seen the men get burnt up, you would have said, who you need me to worship? Who? Who am I bowing to? I bow to all of them. No. Why? How do I know that? And we playing, but I got to be serious. You bow to a bill. You bow to cable. You, you, you bow to a school bill. You, how, what is bowing? Bowing means that you put, you put that first before your worship. Can I ask you right now, what do you put before your worship? Most of you in here are guilty because during worship, you picked up your cell phone at least 10 times and it was not the Bible app. Uh, let, let me just... Let me just shake my head. Oh, if I was you, I'd just discard it now. You texting while I'm preaching. Why are you texting people that you talk to often? Does that make sense? Oh, is pastor a prophet or not? What am I? Why? What does this... What, what, why do you, and, and, and see, what you have to understand, everybody, is that the devil is just like the tree of knowledge and good of evil. You be right next to life <laughs> and choose info. I mean, I can't, why well, I can't get no, <laughs> you be right next to life. The tree of life was created with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the Bible says that he put them in the midst. But you always choose where the devil talks from. Okay, let me go back to my, let me go back to my thing. Let me go back to my thing. I got to tell you something in the church. But let me go back to this. So now um, we have, we have, this Hebrew, Hebrews, I got a lot of stuff for you. Hebrews, but I'll give you a little bit. Hebrews is, it is a, it is not your typical book. It is not, because it does not start out as an epistle. Okay? It is an atypical book. It doesn't start out as an, but it ends as an epistle. It almost sounds like a sermon. All right? Because Hebrews if, uh, for you Bible scholars, uh, it, it, it's almost kind of built in a homiletical outline. Okay? Okay, I heard you. Okay? Or I heard you. Prove that. Okay, so Hebrews 13, Hebrews 13 and 22, it, it's a... Okay, babe. an educated audience, a, a, a audience of non-believers, or an audience of believers who are on the verge of quitting. Uh, it's all right, baby. It, 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 it. What is God calling you to? What audience has God called you to? Because most of you think that God called you to a street, and that's, and that's easiest. Because they don't have nothing to do but listen. So you think. Right? Because you think that God called you from the, 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 the hardest thing is to take a street person and then God send them to educated people. Okay? God does not work how we think. So God does not necessarily have to take a crackhead and send them to crackheads. God can take a crackhead and send them to highly intelligent people. 
and he can do it, and he doesn't have to do it through education. He can do it by the crackhead becoming a driver. Y'all don't, y'all still don't get it. You see, can I tell you, let me take this moment to prophesy to some of you that God is not going to get, he, 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 he said that he was going to bless you and put you among people that you would not normally be around. But the way you think God is going to do it is not the way he's going to do it. God is going to take the common thing and merge it at an even place. That the people that God wants you to meet will be in the nail salon. Your job, your job is to have your spirit ready. Y'all still ain't get it. See, the problem with the body of Christ is when God gives you opportunity, your spirit be off. So you cannot even discern that your destiny partner is sitting right next to you. Instead, you're complaining about what just happened last night. And you miss your opportunity because you're going to give God and salvation. And they're going to give you opportunity of financial gain because they know where the market's at that you want. And you missed it with your attitude. That's why pastor preaches on attitude so much. Because we've walked past our miracle so many times. God is not a liar. You're not prepared. Some of you don't have the capacity to house what God is sending. Because you cannot keep yourself even for one month. Every day you are a different person. Oh, God, help me. I'm, I'm going to say it again. Every day we got to deal with a different personality. Oh, that just, that's just the way I am. Well, stay nasty and unblessed. But I'm talking to the people who are willing to change so they can get what God has for them. I need you to tell, tell yourself I'm willing to change for what God has for me. Hebrews, let me hurry up through here. I can't give you all this. The warnings of Hebrews in chapter 2, 1 through 4, it warns you about drifting. You can write this. In chapter, in chapter 3, 7 through 4 and 13, it warns you about doubting. In chapter 5, 11, 6 through 20, it warns you about being dull. We need to stop right there. Because that's the most sickening thing for people who have the connotation of fire. Fire is never dull. <laughs> when who stop on the day of Pentecost? There could not have been a dull person. Oh, God, I felt you. Everybody, even the most quiet, shy person was on fire. Yes, yes. If the church started out not being dull, why are we dull now? Yes. That, makes me, that makes me to know that your fire is out. Yes. I have never been around a dull campfire. Something is always I never heard a fire be quiet. My God. Y'all didn't hear me. A fire don't have a mouth. It, it, it doesn't have a mouth to speak. But just because of the heat and the intensity and the energy, it makes noise to anything it touches. I can take paper, another silent agent. I can take paper, light it on fire, and that silent paper will start making noise. So what about God's people who say they got the fire inside? Why are you sitting here with no noise from you? I need to hear that you got... That's right, old saints used to say that thing. I can feel the fire burning. I can, my God from Zion, I can feel, because how do I know it's fire? Because I'm on fire. There's something that's making noise inside of me. I'm 
uh, stay on fire. I was sick, but I was on fire. I didn't feel good, but I was on fire. And any time I was laying in the bed, I could hear the... I turned over to my right and I, I didn't feel good but I had to say I had to turn to my left I didn't feel good but I God you're good I had to lay in the bed and just lift my hand straight up in the air and say Lord I thank you 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 I thank you, I thank you. I thank you. There ain't no way you can sit in God's house, sit there dull, not move, and not say, Lord, I thank you. You've been mighty, 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 mighty good. If it had not been, oh Lord, yeah. If it had not been for the Lord that was on us, where? Where would we be? I'd be lost. I'd be like a ship without a sail. Can you say yes? Clap your hands real quick, people. Clap your hands if you got the fire. Hey, yeah, mama. Hey, 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 hey. What inside of you is burning? Sometimes if you don't feel nothing, you just need to get a memory. Just think where he brought you from. Think about that car accident that he brought you out of. Think about the danger seen and the danger unseen and say, Lord, Lord, I thank you. You are a mighty, mighty good God. You are a great God. We praise your name. Yes. All right. All right, let me finish. We're going to take this communion. I didn't mean to do that. Let me, I'm gonna get out of this because there ain't no way I'm gonna finish this. But I need the church to listen, listen. This is what I need you to do. I need you to arrest your own dullness. Did y'all hear? Arrest, put in handcuffs your dullness. Arrest. You're doubting. Arrest your despising so you don't depart. Y'all didn't hear me. The devil, my satire, glory. The devil fools you because you do not arrest what you allow to come in your mind. So listen, listen, give me one second, nephew. Jesus arrested himself by doing what we hate to do. He goes alone. He cries. The Bible says he starts moaning. I'll tell you that though. So can you imagine the man who died on the cross on the ground crying to a father he just came from? All the miracles that he did. All, all the miracles. Yo, yo, what miracles have you done? You got an attitude and you ain't healed a headache. Face tore up over people. Coming to church like this with an agenda to be off. Agenda. I ain't praising. I ain't just I'm doing what I got to do. And you forgot what he did. Oh, yeah, I need all y'all to hear me. An agenda, I said it, an agenda to be off. I don't feel like all that today. I'm never going to, you nasty person, you. And you say you're under the banner of Jesus Christ. So he, he 
according to scripture that you say you believe the Bible. He gets down. He gets down on his knees. Can you imagine? Jesus goes alone. One second. Jesus goes alone. The master of the seas gets down. You complain because you want to have sex. You want to get high. You want a boyfriend. Be embarrassed that your face is fixed on yourself. Be embarrassed. You can't get over the hump of you. I want to be more. I don't have what I wanted. And you take people in India who would love the opportunity to praise God freely. They wouldn't sit a moment. People's hearts are disgusting to God. That's why we can't buy a miracle in church. There was nothing that was going to stop me from being here today. If I can get up yesterday... I was coming today, whether I had to wheel me or not. I never came to church in a wheelchair or not with my heart wrong. You got all that time to get yourself together. You got all that time to prepare your mind for Jesus. And I tell people, I used to tell my young guys when we was trying to live right together, I said, you got 75 yards to repent. How long does it take to repent? You got 75 yards from the street to the door. You got 75 yards to talk to God. So why bring your mess in church? God didn't ask for perfect people. He said become perfect. Perfect yourself. There's a word I didn't give you and I'm done. The word here is teleo, which means preserving. Prever, per, preserving until the end. Completing a task or finished. So when you read 5 and 7, when you read 5 and 7, the whole connotation of that is he did all that to, pervert, to preserve himself for his finish. Did, did you hear me? He preserved himself for the finish of your life so that you can go to heaven, not so you could be successful. He didn't, he didn't die for your career. He didn't die for you to go to college. There's provision for that, but he didn't die for it. You got an attitude over nothing because you're, bite, you're biting the wrong fruit. It ain't life, it's knowledge. Yeah. Biting the wrong fruit. The Lord didn't die so I could be a prophet. He didn't die so I could stand you up and tell you your name and prophesy to you. No. No. He died and then sent me to offer you eternal life. Yes. Everything under that is a provision. And that's the job of the devil to make provision better than life. Yeah. Yeah. Only thing you're mad about sitting in this church is that you didn't get the provision you wanted. Your face is turned up. Your attitude is wrong, brother, because of provision. Not life. 
You'd be so happy you're breathing. You'd be so happy that you're alive for opportunity. You'll stop complaining about it. Yeah, well, I got to do me. And when they, when they came out with that do me stuff, I preached against it. I've been preaching against it since 2010. Don't bring that mess up in here. I told you, don't say that mess. That's another form of a, of, of, of a do as thou will. That's just another form of it. And that's another thing I'm tired of the church being ignorant of the devil's devices. When the Bible said, don't be ignorant. We don't fight the same enemy. He's more advanced. We don't drive old Satan away. Oh, drive old Satan away. Satan is singing it with us. He's singing a song with us. Oh, drive him away. Oh. I won't even finish this because I told you I was going to let you out early. And I'll tell you this story. I told it one time before. I am a big, I'm a follower of the people who, uh, who are before me. So, Bob Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Who do we go see, Yolanda? Uh, Bobby Connors. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm of prophets, not of our, uh, who? Chuck yeah, who? Chuck Pierce. Chuck Pierce. We went to a Chuck Pierce convention. Some of y'all don't even know. It's all right. Back in the day, I was Mar Sorello. I was everybody. I was everybody. Everybody. Anybody who... who any, I, I, I've been like that, even when I was a sinner. I don't know why my appetite was for that. Right? I could call off stuff from you. Roberts Lairdon, the God's General Tape. I, uh, Kenneth Hagen. All, all, I was been... I've been... Listen, y'all, that's been me. But in listening to, listening to Bobby Connor, he said one day, you can play now, nephew. Uh, 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 play in uh, C sharp, I think. I ain't got the voice I want. Uh, he said, I want everybody to hear me. This needs, this needs to help all of y'all who think you really know God. He said um, he was in a big conference, and he's, he's a major, major prophet to the body of Christ. Major prophet. When I say major, I mean major prophet. He's a major prophet to the body of Christ. And he said he was, he was in a conference and a couple thousand people, at least in the room. It was what a big time preacher, his friend though, this was his friend. And he said he was praying. He was on the line praying. And he said he was praying for healing. And he knew the Lord had told him this night he would do miracles. And, um, he said, but he couldn't get the breakthrough that he, he needed. But Thank you, Lord. Yes, I heard you. So he couldn't get the breakthrough he needed. And he said he looked and the lady was praying and they had a, like say, a group of intercessors. And the older, older, older lady was praying and he, he asked the pastor, he said, what's going on? Anything going on? Who is that lady praying? He goes, oh, that's my chief intercessor. She's a prayer warrior. She's been a prayer warrior for years. So he kept on trying to move, and he said the lady was speaking in tongue, and it just wasn't fitting right with his spirit. Y'all hear me? So it wasn't fitting right with his spirit. So he just kept on praying, kept on. He said, finally, he stopped. He says, no, she's wrong. Something's not right with her. And the pastor, his friend, looked at him and said, hey, Brother, you're off. That's my chief intercessor. She's been praying like this for years. God has really used her. And he, he said, brother, I'm telling you right now, she's off. She ain't right. So he said he, when, he, when he felt God move on him in front of everybody, he pointed to her and he said, I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. And when he pointed his finger to the chief intercessor, she began to curse him. And he said, tell who you are. She was a high-ranking witch that had been sent to the intercessory department and she had been cursing the church for years. Oh, I'll give you another one since the Lord brought it to me. Same man 
was in a, he was with Bob Jones, though. Bob Jones was the chief of all of them. I mean, this man would tell you, who are you going to talk to 20 years from now? And you would bump into that person on the date that he called. It was, un, he was, his, his gift was unreal. He'd be like, oh, tomorrow you're going to meet a man named Bob. Bob's going to be in the corner eating eggs with, 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 with grits and, and just hillbilly type guy. When you meet that man, he's going to give you a check for $5,000. And it would happen. There's years of this. Bob Jones and, and Bobby Connor were doing a, a meeting, and they were trying to get a breakthrough. And they couldn't get the breakthrough in deliverance, healing. And Bob Jones says, there's two of you. No, Bobby Connor said, there's two of you in here. God showed me last night. You're Satanists. And if you don't, you know, it's three of you. said, if you three don't get right right now, you will drop dead and die. See, we don't believe. We read the Ananias and Sapphira story, but we don't believe this. Okay, check this out. The three men got scared because they were ministers in behind them. So they ran. One runs out of the church. The other two get come down and show, take their shoes off and show the pentagram that was inscribed on the bottom of their feet. Hey. Have been smunted It's time to locate our issues. All right. Sitting in church. Well, guess what? Something happened to the man that ran out. He died. Like right after he died. But the other two got saved. It's not fable. It's not fable. You hot. You tired. God's trying to give you life. You spend more time appeasing yourself and your appetites rather than your life. Now I got to separate myself from them. We ain't doing it. The day is too late. The night is spent. Jesus is coming back. I said, Jesus is coming back. You want to go, listen, I know. You want to go get your check, go get a check. You want to go get a car, go get a car. You, you want to go get your house, go get your house. Go get your information rather than the tree of life. If you get to the tree, everything you wanted would be granted. All these things will be added. You're running after the wrong thing. The book of Hebrews is trying to tell you, you're not being persecuted for no reason. You're being persecuted because something's brewing. That's why Hebrews is a book of faith. You know what cures dullness? Faith. Off desires, faith. Drifting, faith. What do you believe in? Stop believing appeasing you. Stroking your own ego. I could do it on my own. I don't need nobody. Just crying for no reason. You crying for no reason. You should go on the street and cry for people who have no shoes and no place to sleep. You might be upset, but you got a bed. No amens, really? You might be upset, but you, you got a key that unlocks a door so you can go in. You got your own refrigerator. Right now, you got at least $5 to get you a couple bags of chips to hold you until somebody feeds you. You're complaining? You don't like God now? You don't like the church? You don't like this system? The system is broken? No, you're broken. Stop blaming God's system. And did I do a good job today? I don't want your praise. I don't want your praise. I want your ear. I'm all right. I'm all right. 
I need your ear to hear so you stop complaining. Some of you are turning God off from even coming to your rescue. You keep complaining. You keep your, you, you, instead of praying, you complain first. You got something to say about his bride first. Some of you allow people to throw you off so quick, we don't even know you're anointed or not. Don't be jumping in front of my face with a word and you can't go through nothing. The first marks of a prophet is how abused can you be? You know, you know, a prophet has to, pro just imagine this. A prophet has to prophesy while three people are punching him at the same time. Pop, pop, pump, pump. Thus saith the Lord. And while you're being beat, you got to speak what God says. Even if God's speaking a blessing over your abuser. You're a weak person. Let me tell you, and I hate to go here. I hate to go here. I really do. I hate to go here, but I have to say it, especially for the audience that I have today. It's a shame that God be trying to get us to speak while we're being abused, and we won't do it. But we can have sex with people we don't like. You lay with someone you don't like for pleasure, and you know you don't like that person. You don't like their sin. You know after it's done, it's over. You ain't going to ever deal with them again. But you'll lay with them. Thank you for standing your nail. I know what you did. You, you said. You'll lay with a person you don't like. Man and female. Man and woman. Woman and man. Woman and woman. Man and man. You'll lay with a person for hours that you don't like. Right. Oh, quiet now. Just for pleasure. After it's over, you'll argue, kick them out, or have nothing to do with them. But thus saith the Lord will be locked up because someone brushed against you in church. And you didn't like what they did. Now you can't be used of God. I ain't saying nothing today. Don't say nothing to me, nobody. Nobody better, they better not breathe on me today. Because they're going to get read today. You didn't read that person. Okay, let me. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Yes. Buying people drinks you don't even know. Yeah. Doing all kinds of foolishness. Right. Then when we get to God's house, now you got criteria. Yeah. Yeah. Now you got a criteria. Tired of it. Who is on the subrakisen on? Who's on God's side? Who? Show me. Don't tell me. Because everybody that tells me leaves. Everybody that got something to say is out the door. It's not a personal thing. We're not a, we ain't got no room. It's not a personal thing. I'm saying, who's on God's side? Who? Who would say, for God I live and for God I die? I don't care about people. Stand up. At some point, we got to preach with emotion. At some point, it's got to be heartfelt. At some point, I can't offer you healing if my emotion is not tied into it. Truth has to be emotional at some point. Because my compassion pulls you out of fire. 